What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of one of my favorite series on the channels, East vs. West Coast. Um, today we're talking something different, it's not Halloween Horror Nights related, I know the first like three or four episodes we did are Halloween Horror Nights related, but today we're talking about Bush Gardens versus Not Scary Farm. Without further ado, let's just get this video started. Eddie's gonna start off with his um, uh, his haunt first, and he's gonna tell me a little bit about it. Then I'll mention my haunt, and then at the end we'll give our final thoughts on what we're jealous of, what we want to see in each other's haunts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Eddie, go ahead and start it off for us, buddy. Okay, perfect. So um, to begin, we got Hollow Scream. This year was the 20th anniversary, and this haunt is staged at a. a Pretty large theme park. I think on the West Coast, you guys are well aware of Busch Gardens Williamsburg as well as Busch Gardens Tampa. Probably more familiar with Busch Gardens Tampa. Uh, but Busch Gardens in general is, if I had to compare it to some of our marquee theme parks, it's probably the next level right below Disney and Universal Studios. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a pretty large park. It's, uh, it, it offers a lot of diversity as far as like... Um, rides uh dark rides roller coasters so on and so forth and their annual uh halloween event is called hollow scream now just like the park is a few tiers below universal and disney i would also you know venture to say that so is their haunt so um i wouldn't compare apples to apples hollow scream versus halloween horror nights but i would definitely say that you know, if you're going down the tiers, this is the next best thing. Yeah. So, Howl Scream this year has its 20th year. So, it was an anniversary year, which makes it a special year for the event. They usually tend to put a little bit more into it. Um, the park itself is themed as, uh, like, kind of like a uh, different cultures. You got Oktoberfest, you have Germany, you have New France. Regular France, Ireland, England, Scotland, Italy, and Italia, or Festa Italia is what it's called. Um, you go through these different places, you get different culinary options, but you also get kind of themes that are subject to those, to those areas. Um, so to start us off this year, we had, let's see, how many houses do we have this year? We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven houses. We had seven houses, and through those seven houses, we got a nice variety of different scares. Um, the marquee house this year was Vault 20, um, obviously for the 20th year of the event. Um, that house was basically a trip down memory lane. Sweet. You got to see... Go ahead. No, I said sweet. Oh, yeah. We got to see basically... All the events of years past with the icons, characters, different different houses that we experienced. And by far, it did not let down. Um, it lived up to the expectation. It was a cool trip down memory lane. Uh, we also had this year just a few new haunted houses. I'm not sure in comparison. We'll hear in a second how Knott's Berry Farm does it. But Hollow Scream at Bush Gardens tends to recycle a lot of their houses and just occasionally add in some new houses. Um, so for the most part, they were all new houses, or sorry, all repeating houses with just a few new houses. So the next new house after Vault 20 this year was Dystopia. Dystopia was basically a, a house that, that ventured into the future, into a post-apocalyptic utopia but it was a facade. It wasn't a true utopia. We were all being brainwashed. And they did a really good job of taking you down that and basically keeping true to the story as you walk through the house, which was pretty impressive for the level of, of event that it is. 
Um, and then the, the last new house that they presented this year was Demented Dimensions. Demented Dimensions is uh, interdimensional vortex has opened and basically exposed our Earth to these demons from other dimensions. Um, I did that house twice because now I've been to the event twice this year. And I thought it was a, a cool house the second time around. The first time around, it kind of let me down. Um, one thing that I did notice, though, is just in general, the overall uh, kind of like, uh, I, I guess this year, they were having trouble with keeping the right amount of characters in play. So just overall this year, I, I noticed that there wasn't that many characters. So the event was more about what you see and it being aesthetically pleasing than it being the scariest event in the area. Um, so now you, we get to the houses that are basically repeat houses from previous years. Um, you got Cirque du Sinistro, which very simply is a house with clowns, probably the best out of the re returning houses. Um, you got Cornered, which is a house that is hard to enjoy, but it's a great concept. You're going through a corn maze, but it's a house set in the outside, and you got these large buildings around it. So you could see a lot of the exterior um, houses or uh, sound stages exposed while you're inside of the house. So it kind of kills it, but the idea is really cool. You're in a corn maze, and a lot of the characters are basically scarecrows. And then you have uh, Frostbite, which last year was a new house. This year is a returning house. It still hasn't kind of found its footing, but it's a cool basic idea, kind of like a, an Ice Age with an Ice King, and the Ice King is very reminiscent of what you would find in Game of Thrones as a White Walker. Um, he looks like the Night King, and you're going through like his icy haunted world. And then the last but not least returning house was Lumberhack. And I say not least because it's probably the second best of the returning houses. Lumberhack, you're going through kind of like a wooded area. You got these uh, crazy like farm boys with chainsaws and axes kind of chasing you around. So it's, it's a really cool house. And I, I also have to pay honorable mention to some of the characters there. They actually commented on some of my previous videos. So it was cool to see interaction from characters on my previous videos. Sweet. And then, yeah, it was really cool. You have uh, the territories. So they, they just like in Halloween Horror Nights and some of your other events, you go through different themed areas on the regular streets that offer a themed scare. Um, Ripper's Row is in Germany when you enter the park and is based around uh, uh, Jack the Ripper. Nice. And so you get some cool theming in that area. Um, you'll see in some of the, the videos that I've posted, Jack the Ripper is actually present on the streets. Um, Axe Alley is in the back of the park. It's an area where basically it's, it's a, similar to Lumberhack, but it's actually not next to Lumberhack or it doesn't lead into Lumberhack. Uh, but you got these axe and chainsaw massacre type of style coming after you. Um, Vampire Point is in, where's Vampire Point? Vampire Point is in Germany. Oh, I, I stand corrected. Um, Ripper's Row is in, is in, uh, is it Germany? No, uh, England. England. Ripper's Row is in England, not Germany. Vampire Point is in Germany. Um, and the name says it for itself. There is vampires all over the place. Really cool. You got in that area some pretty cool projection mapping. Um, Sideshow Square is what leads into Cirque du Sinistro. So it's another area with a bunch of clowns. They got large hammers and chainsaws as well. Uh, the Garden of Souls was new this year. It was a new scare. Uh, territory, um, which basically was kind of like a Dia de los Muertos style territory. Um, and then you got Fool's Court, which was um, a bunch of jesters that were in the, what area was that again? Um, that was in France. Um, it, it's these jesters, which is also like a very like clown style um, approach, but these guys were not armed with anything except for very terrifying looking faces. 
And uh, last but not least, to kind of round up the event, this event has something that's a little bit different. Um, two things, actually, that are a little bit different from your traditional marquee events like Halloween Horror Nights. One of them being um, the fact that you you have uh, escape rooms. So there's two escape rooms, um, different themings for both of them. Every year, those tend to change. Um, given that this was the 20th year, the the main icon of this event and the original icon of the event is also Jack, but it's not Jack the Clown. It's hmm. Jack um, the Pumpkin. He He's like a man with a pumpkin face. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, and it's kind of funny when I think of Halloween Horror Nights and Bush Gardens, they both have the, the same kind of like main icon name, but they're different people. Um, and then they have something called the control room, which in the control room, you could pay for these coins that give you access to these different screens with these buttons, and those buttons are scares. So there's interactive maps around the, the whole entire park that you could go and, you know, kind of navigate yourself around the, the park. But if somebody's at the control room and enters a coin while you're navigating through the map and, like, you know, pressing the buttons and whatnot, they could scare you. And basically the screen goes black and somebody pops out and goes, ah, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could also control some of the scares that are in the actual houses as well. There's like one that it, you're walking through a cemetery and a skeleton pops out from behind the, the gravestone. That's actually a person controlled scare from the control station. It's pretty awesome. But yeah, in a nutshell, that is basically the whole entire event. How, how long did that take me to explain? Uh, you literally only had five seconds left, so you guys, you got it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, I'm going to start the timer back at 10 minutes, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit on the West Coast side of things. And here we go. So we got Not Scary Farm over here on the West Coast. For you, of you guys who live in California, it's right up the 5 freeway and um, right before Disneyland and stuff like that. Um, much like Bush Gardens, yes, we do recycle a lot of um, mazes for the previous years. And they'll probably bring out like two or three, depending on what they want to do. Or they'll retheme them, reskin them, and stuff like that, and give them a new story. As far as mazes go, we had uh, eight mazes this year. Um, and the first maze, the first, the first two mazes I'm gonna talk about, where they were the two new ones of this year. So we got the depths, which was pretty cool. It was um, so you're at this, you're supposed to be on the sea and stuff like that. Then you go and you see all these uh, exotic kind of sea creatures and stuff like that. You go face to face with Davy Jones. It, it was a really cool uh, theme. One of the best parts in this uh, maze by far was the scene where you're walking through and it's supposed to be uh, in the water. But it's green lights and fog, so it looks like you're underwater, and the freaking characters slowly pop up and scare you, which was really cool. Um, the another new one that we had this year was Dark Entities, and that was an alien meets the thing kind of type maze where you walk through a, a spaceship and you're supposed to be in space, and this alien is jumping out at you trying to kill you like he's killing all the other uh, members of the ship. And it was a very interesting maze uh, with that being said. Um, trick or Treat, Lights Out. I didn't go through that one this year, but I did go through it last year, and it's basically the same thing. But Trick or Treat was a maze that they had at the uh, event where uh, it was supposed to be these kids, and you walk through this haunted house and stuff like that, but you see there's a lot of witchcraft and stuff like that. They basically took that maze, turned the lights off, and gave you a flashlight. So every time you walk through, you point your flashlight at certain areas, and the flashlight turns on, and you see a scarecter. Then if it goes off and then it comes back on, this character's gone. So it's kind of one of those mazes where like, oh shit, what's going to happen next? Uh, Paranormal okay. Inc., that's a good one. Um, Paranormal Inc., is, is, uh, it's been around the event, I think, for four years now. But it's basically a show called Paranormal Inc. These guys going into this asylum and they're investigating um, the paranormal history behind it and seeing what's going on. There's, they see a lot of activity and stuff like that and it's pretty interesting. Um... The Red Barn has been around for a while too. Red Barn is pretty good, but this year they kind of changed the uh, facade and uh, the theming of it, and I thought it was a lot better this year than it was last year. But basically, you're going into this barn, and it's a it's about a cannibalistic chainsaw family. Who does that kind of remind you of? Um, <laughs> and you walk and you walk through this uh, this barn, and you're seeing all their victims. You're seeing all these like like everybody being slaughtered and stuff like that, which is really cool. Then you got the Shadowlands, which is a, a ninja-based maze where you're walking around Japan and you see a rogue ninja trying to kill people. Um, and this year it was cool. They added a new intro where you walk through the suicide forest of Japan, so that was pretty interesting. 
Uh, one of my favorite mazes that they, they brought back again too was the dark ride where you go through so, you go through this abandoned dark ride at a carnival and uh, it's all run down and stuff and it's all taken over by the carnies and they they have killer instincts to try to kill all the guests that walk through it and it was pretty interesting nonetheless. And my all-time favorite maze at the event is Special Ops Infected because with that maze, it's a zombie maze, but you get a gun and it's very interactive, so you get to shoot zombies and stuff, which is really fun. Those are our mazes this year. So we got a couple of scare zones. We got four scare zones. In the in the boardwalk area, we have Carn Evil, which is a clown-based um, uh, scare zone. Here at Not Scary Farm, they're very famous for the sliders, so they have people with the knee pads and you know um, stuff on their hands to s cause sparks and they slide right into people which is pretty cool um, they don't trip them over of course or anything but uh, one of the infamous scare zones that opens the haunt is ghost town streets which is the the most filled fog area you'll ever see it's so filled with fog you can barely freaking see your hand in front of your face that's how bad it is um, the forsaken lake was over there by uh, the silver bullet going into um, the uh, like Dia de los Mortos area and um, it's right next to an actual lake and it's supposed to be a bunch of souls that are, are lost and they're trying to wander around finding and killing people and stuff like that. Uh, and the last one was the hollow which took place in Camp Snoopy um, which is the kid themed area but at night they fog it up it's pretty dark and it's about uh, a bunch of scarecrows and witchcraft and this witch is controlling all the scarecrows trying to kill the guest obviously so that's pretty cool. Uh, shows at the event, we have uh, we have two new shows this year, and then we have one re returning show that comes back every year. That's a fan favorite. Um, the first, the two new shows are called the the Conjurers. It's a magic show. I didn't get to see that, but I heard it's mostly just kind of comedy magic and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And we have ha uh, Hacks the Cutting Room Floor, which I didn't get to see either, so I, I can't really tell you much about that one. Um, and then the reoccurring show that comes back every year, but it's always new every year. They, they always uh, make fun of pop culture and stuff like that. It is called The Hanging, where um, the sheriff of Calico comes in. Um, he chooses a victim who's worthy enough to be hung, uh, who's done wrong to society and stuff like that. And it's always a scumbag every year, which is pretty funny. This year, spoiler alert, they hung Logan Paul, and I thought that was hilarious. So, um, so That's hilarious. Yeah, it was going to be Harvey Weinstein, and then it was going to be Roseanne, and then at the end, they as they were trying to hang him, you see Logan Paul come out filming them trying to get hung and stuff like that, so then they ended up trying to film Logan Paul. Oh, yeah. man. So it's a parody show. They do a lot of parodies. <laughs> they parody a lot of stuff that goes on throughout the year and stuff like that. So if you're easily offended, it's not a show for you, but if you love laughing, and, and he, hearing parodies, this is your kind of show. Um, so if you guys are interested in Not Scary Farm and you guys are from out of state or you guys live far in California and you want to come down, they got a d bunch of different hotel and ticket packages that I highly suggest you take advantage of. Um, so I'm going to go through the hotel packages first and then I'll go through the uh, standard ticket packages so then you can tell me what you guys like and stuff like that. So the hotel packages uh, follow as this. They got the bare bones package, which you get a hotel and not scary farm uh, general admission, and that's one ninety a night, um, which is not too bad for a hotel. They have the haunted dreams hotel, which you get the hotel, not scary farm admission, and a free breakfast and a free dinner, and that goes for two eighty a night, which is uh, still not that bad, especially if getting uh, free breakfast and dinner. Um, they have the gruesome gateway hotel package, where you get the hotel. Uh, you get the Not Scary Farm uh, ad general admission and uh, Fright and Fast Lane, which is basically their front of the line service where you get unlimited uh, front of the line for both mazes and attractions uh, that are open that night, which is awesome. And that goes for four fifty a night. Um, and that was the last hotel packages. So if you guys are interested in coming down to Not Scary Farm, either out of state or from far away from California, I uh, highly suggest to take advantage of some of those packages, especially because... Uh, they got such good deals on them. Uh, and then we're going to go to the uh, ticket ticketing of the event, which we have, of course, the Not Scary Farm General Admission. Uh, it goes anywhere from $44 to $82. $44 being if you buy it online, $82 if you buy it at the gate. Um, Not Scary Farm, they have an annual pass to this event, uh, which is I thought was really cool. And that goes for $90, which is honestly worth it if you want to go almost every night of the year. That, sadly, by now is already sold out, though, so there's no getting it right now. Uh, they have the Fright Lane Fast Lane, like I mentioned. It's uh, unlimited front of the line to the mazes and attractions, and that goes anywhere from 140 to 149 um, depending on the night you go. Um, they have the Not uh, Scary Farm All-Inclusive Pass, which is uh, you get um, Fast and uh, Fright Lane, front of the line, uh, free parking. 
You get to go to the buffet, which is uh, something they do prior to the event, and you get to, of course, get into the event. Uh, and that goes for one seventy eight ninety nine. If you're getting all that free food and all that stuff, I it, I think it's generally worth it. Free parking, so that that's one. If you never been to the event, probably one you should do. Um, and if you want to just do the buffet, which is called the buffet, uh, it's prior to the event, about an hour or two before the event, they feed you. Uh, that uh, on top of the ticket, uh, the ticket of course is forty four eighty two. Uh, and if you want to add the buffet, that's thirty one ninety nine. Uh, and it looks like they give you some good stuff. And honestly, the scare actors interact with you while you're eating, which is pretty cool. So I, I do like that. Um, and of course, last but not least, is the Fright Fast Lane Pass, which, like I keep saying, gets you unlimited for every attraction that's open, even mazes uh, all night long. That goes anywhere from eighty five to one hundred and five dollars. But that is not Scary Farm. They are both owned by, uh, this and Bush Gardens are owned by Cedar Fair. Um, and I can see a lot of similarities between the events. Um, one of my favorite things at the event, is, of course, is going through uh, a lot of the scare zones. Because a lot of my favorite scare actors are um, sliders. And the sliders are just really cool. And I really enjoy them. So uh, that is going to do it for both events. We're going to go to the last topic of the uh the video which is the thoughts of each event and of course the versus portion of the video so um eddie go ahead and give your thoughts on uh what you think okay so uh first and foremost just to kind of like round things out i didn't say anything about like the ticketing options and hotel options but they seem to be very similar uh, i myself am a bush gardens williamsburg annual pass holder which gets me into bush gardens williamsburg hollow scream their christmas event and over here, it gets really cold in the wintertime, so they close down for the winter and then reopen in the spring. Um, the events seem to have huge similarities in the fact that they are kind of the next tier after your big Universal haunts or Disney haunts, which Disney is a more family-oriented haunt, but it, was, it still has that that large effect to it. Yeah. Um, the the sliders that you were talking about that sounds really cool that's something that we definitely don't have um from what i've seen on you know youtube and read about for not scary farm not scary farm uh may not have the budget that halloween horror nights has but it has the the scares which is something that um i mean you could clarify for me if i'm right or i'm wrong um bush gardens williamsburg doesn't necessarily have um as i was saying it's it's a it's an event where you get more aesthetics than you do get uh, scares. Yeah. Um, but from what I've seen for not scary, you get some scares, some solid scares when you're in there, even on a lower budget type of event. Yeah. The the pricing of the tickets is very similar. Um, the hotel options seem damn near identical. Um, yeah, but for the most part. Not Scary is somewhere that I definitely want to go. Hopefully next year when I do hit up the West Coast and do Halloween Horror Nights, that's, that's the next thing on my list of to-dos if I'm out there doing haunts. Um, I, I do think just personally with having, without having had experience Not Scary that I have a feeling Not Scary has a leg up on, the, on Hallow Scream. But when it comes to theme parks in general, Bush Gardens is maybe a little bit more advanced as just a theme park. But the actual not scary uh, event for for Haunt is a little bit more advanced as far as the scares go. Yeah, uh, that's kind of my my general opinion. I haven't experienced Not Scary Farm, so I'm just going off of like my feeling from what I've seen. Um, yeah, and I think the only thing on Bush Gardens I've really seen is your stuff. Um, so going off your stuff, I I kind of see that they have um, some areas when you were walking around that they could use as for say um, scare opportunities. Um, there's some areas that are kind of just bare that they can honestly put scare characters in just to kind of throw you off guard where you think you're safe, but then um, out of nowhere they get you. One of the things they do at our event is they have people dressed in the camouflage suits, so they put them in like different areas where you're like not expecting it. Um, I saw a couple places where there was like, uh, you know, forest and like trees and stuff like that. That'd be a perfect place, especially at night, for those guys to come out and jump out at you. Um, 
But nonetheless, uh, Bush Gardens is definitely a place I would love to visit just to kind of see a new haunt, a new setting of some sort. Um, and I really do enjoy it. I should also mention too, I think Not Scary Farm was one of the first ones to actually start the haunt kind of tradition. Yeah. The yeah, the whole haunt thing was because of knots and after knots kind of blew up and stuff like that, um other haunts started opening up uh worldwide and stuff like that and you know, so haunt or knots kind of set the the to- the ground for um haunts and the way they are today and stuff like that, but um when it comes down to it, I think um I don't know, man. I, I, I can't really say too much about Bush Gardens because I haven't seen a lot on it. But from what I have seen out of your stuff, um, it looks pretty interesting. And it's something that definitely, if I were ever in your area, I would love to check out. Um, yeah. I, I would say it's, it's decent. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, uh, we're going to bring this video to an end. You heard both of the theme parks, both out here on the West Coast and on the East Coast. Um and so it's your it's your guys' turn in the comments to find out which you, which one do you think, in your opinion, is uh, your favorite. Um, you know, compare and contrast and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, thanks guys for watching this video. Thank you for joining the Madhouse, 200 plus strong. And uh, congratulations to Eddie Tame, 100 plus strong, making his way up. Um, make sure you. to leave a like. Leave them comments below what you guys think on both events. And like always, guys, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.